Okay, this is okay. This is chapter two. Uh, Okay, this is chapter 3, section 2, talking about domain arrangement graph. Last video we talked about domain arrange with mappings and uh, tables and graphs, but I want to get more specific this time. Domain is the set of all the inputs or the x values that appear in the graph. You can also think about it as the x values that work in a function, um, but we'll talk about more about what that kind of means later in another video. So I'm, I'm going to look at this graph here. In this graph, I'm checking for the domain, meaning the x values. I look at the graph and I see which x values appear. And there's an x value of 1 right here. Right? Like here's the x value of 1. Even it's the point 1, 2, but all I want is the x value. And then this graph just continuously moves to the right. It does up and down stuff, but it's continuously moving in this direction. So this has a domain that goes from 1 to infinity. The x values go from 1 to infinity. And this right here is called interval notation. I'll talk very, very soon about interval and set builder notation. For now, just think this is going from 1 to infinity. Bracket means we're including the 1. Parenthesis means we're not including infinity. Range is the y values. If we think about how this graph is going up and down, the, high, or the lowest value it hits is 2. The highest value it hits here is 5. And it's not going anywhere above or below 2 and 5. It's like this is going perfectly horizontally as it goes out to the right. The range here is everything from 2 to 5, including all of those numbers. Domain is the x values that work. Range is the y values that work. And it's basically like thinking about what, what is happening in this graph? Where are the things occurring? I was very careful to make a graph that didn't cross the x-axis or the y-axis anywhere. Uh, the y or x is high circled, actually. Because students often just look for points where you're crossing the x-axis, think that's your range or your domain, and where you're crossing the y-axis, that's your range. But it's not that. It's the whole graph. How high does it go? How low does it go? How far left does it go? How far right does it go? Think about a scanner. Okay, This is a picture of Link that my friend Sean Lee drew. He's an artist that goes by Shalbro. If you want to check his stuff, most of the art I use will be from him, I hope. Uh, say we've got a scanner that's going to run a green line along this image. Hmm, let's try that again. A green line along this image. And as it runs that green line along, it goes and it shines a light up through a sheet of paper. And it goes and shines up light through it. And every time the green line is hitting some ink, it detects where the ink is on a grid and tells the machine, okay, put some ink at this point on a sheet of paper, and it can fabricate and duplicate documents that way. Well, that's what domain is doing. It's like we go, and as we're scanning, we're not touching the graph at all here, in this case the picture. We start touching it here. And so the computer thinks, okay, there's a point there. And then we keep touching it all the way along, scanning, 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 scanning until we get to here. And we stop touching it at about this point. Everything in between is covered in our domain. Those are all the x values that appear. Then we do basically the same thing for the range, the y values. I'm going to have to play with this a little bit, so please be patient. Oop, that went too high. Horizontal line. And it's going to start at the bottom and scan and go, go away. Hitting the graph, 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 hitting the graph up until about here. So it's going from, let's say, this point here to it was this point right about here. And that would give me my range. My range is everything in here. And then if I snuck these two lines together, I can basically build a box, and everything inside that box matches the domain and the range. It's the picture of all the x values that are appearing and all the y values that are appearing. You can also think about it like if you ever use Photoshop or GIMP, they ask you when you start, how big do you want your template to be, your image you're working with? They ask for a width and a height. Well, the width is the x values, the height is the y values. So in this case, I was making a picture that went from 0 to 640 along the x-axis. That's how many pixels there were. And from 0 to 400. 
and that gives me this rectangle that you can eventually see behind it, this rectangle that I'm working with. And it's like, hey, listen, because that's all Link is able to say or think or do anymore is, hey, listen, let's move on. Hey, listen. There's two main ways to express domains and ranges. There's set notation and there's interval notation. I'm going to show you both, and for one homework assignment, I'm going to expect you to do both. After that, I don't care. You can pick whichever you like better. Most of you are going to prefer interval notation, just because it uh, involves less writing, quite frankly. But we'll see. So here's a graph. Right now, it has two pieces to it. It's, a, it's an odd-looking graph. But there's a piece here, and there's a piece here. The domain of this graph is going from negative 3 to negative infinity, and from 4 to positive infinity. That's what this is saying here. This is saying this is the set of all numbers x such that x is less than negative 3, and that's what this part is, or x is greater than 4, and that's what this part is. Or, you can think about it as the y values range. The y values are going from 3 to 7, which is what this is. y is between 3 and 7. Or it's going from 4 down to negative, or sorry, from 2 all the way down to negative infinity, which is what this is. y is less than 2. So l let me show you how to read this now, how to think about this. When you see these wing brackets, as I call them, they're called set builder notation. See these wing brackets? This is saying the set. Set means the collection of things. This is the set of all numbers x, such that, this vertical line means such that, such that x is less than or equal to negative 3, comma, or x is greater than 4. So this is saying the range is the set of all numbers y, such that y is less than 2, and 3 is less than y is less than or equal to 7. An easier way to say this right here, I, I just said 3 is less than y, which is less than or equal to 7. The easier way of saying that is y is between 3 and 7, and then 3 is exclusive or 7 is inclusive because you can't touch 3. We do touch 7, right? If the lesson is greater than, don't include the value. That's the open circle. If there's an open circle, you are not including the value, in this case a y value of 2 and an x value of 4. If it's got the equals 2 on it, then you do include the value. This one we call inclusive. This one we call exclusive. Now we can do all the same thing with set builder notation, only we just write it a little bit differently. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit for now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Set builder does the same thing, but it gives you an interval. This, I'm sorry, interval notation <laughs> gives you an interval. This is saying everything between negative infinity and 3. And the 3 is in brackets because we're including the 3. So the x values are going from negative infinity till 3. That's what this graph was doing up here, from here to here. Really from, yeah, off to forever. Then here, it's going from 4 to positive infinity. That's what this is saying, 4 to infinity. Parentheses do not include the value. They're exclusive. Uh, brackets do include the value. They are inclusive. So, if ever you actually have the thing you're dealing with, you have it in the brackets like we had here, here we had a parenthesis. Set builder, interval, I don't care what you use. Um, set builder can be really nice if there's specific individual things happening. Interval is nice if you have long, drawn out sets. Let me go through a few examples of these and try to make it real clear how to write this out. This, I'm going to use in set and interval and do the domain first. The domain of this red one is going from negative 2 on to infinity. So as a set, the domain is the set of all numbers x such that, that vertical line means such that, such that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Doing it in interval notation would be our domain is going from negative 2 to infinity. Infinity will always be in a parenthesis because you can never actually include or hold infinity. It, it, we can't have it. It's too, too big and too forever. So we put in a parenthesis always, 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 always. The range is going up and down. This graph, it looks like it's going straight sideways, but it's, that's a parabola. It's supposed to be pointing up and down forever. Pretend like it's doing this. You can't see it very well because the slopes get so flat. But it's going up and down forever. So we will say that the range 
is the set of all numbers y such that negative infinity is less than y, which is less than infinity. Or we could also say the set of all numbers y such that y is in all real numbers. Uh, that backwards e, backwards 3, this thing here, is means, sorry, not that, this thing here, means is an element of or is in the set of, and that's fine, either way is fine. This is where interval notation is really nice. We're just going from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, see if you can figure out the domain and range of these next three, and see if you can write them on your own. I'll start color coding better. As a set, the domain here, and again, pause if you want to pause and do this, which is worthwhile. The set of all numbers x such that negative infinity is less than x, which is less than infinity. Or we could say um, x is in all real numbers. This is a bad little wing bracket. Oof. In interval notation, the domain is going from negative infinity to infinity. Range is doing the exact same thing. These are pointing left and right forever, up and down forever, so the range is going to be the set of all numbers y, such that negative infinity is less than y, which is less than infinity, or the range would be that same thing there. Okay, this one's got a lot of pieces to it. Uh, three individual pieces to this graph. So the domain here is going from negative 5 to 7, so it's a set of all numbers x such that x is between negative 5 and 7. Uh, just space this out a little more. I should always avoid doing 7s because they look like my less thans. The set of all numbers x such that x is between negative 7 and negative 5. And one of these is inclusive. The negative 7 is inclusive. And x is between negative 4 and 1. Those are both inclusive. And x is going from 3 to infinity. A lot going on there. This is, again, where I think interval notation is very nice. Because for this, the domain in interval notation would be negative 7 to 5. We include the negative 7. We don't include the 5. Then it would be from negative 4 to 1. Include both of those. And then it would be from 3 to infinity. Don't include either of those. These little U's that I wrote in between, it's actually the symbol for union. It means, um, think of it as, and isn't technically the correct term to use here. Think of it as with. It's this with this with this. And is okay. It's not actually correct because we're talking about intersections when we do that. So the word with is probably most appropriate here. But if you want to think of it as and, that's fine. So the range is going to be the set of all numbers Y such that... And y is going from 5 to 2. But then it just keeps on going from 2 to negative, we'll just call that negative 4. So this is actually a much simpler range. There's overlap because this isn't a 1 to 1 function. And that's OK. This is just going from negative 4 to 5. And I am including both of those. Mm, let's just try that all again. This is going from negative 4 to 5. So negative 4 is less than y, which is less than 5, and they're actually both less than or equal to because they both include. So for here, the range goes from negative 4 to 5. Last one, the domains... Let's go with white. The domains are um, non-continuous, 
but they're always inclusive, so we're going from 7, negative 7, to negative 2. And then from negative 1 to 3. And also 4. Just a single point 4. In an interval, that's from negative 7 to negative 2. Negative 1 to 3. And then 6. If it's just a single element, put it in a wing bracket. Just the element 6. For the range, we're going, it's just the numbers 4 to negative 4. 4 to negative 4. So I'm going to say y such that y is 4 to negative 4. I'll go in alphabet, or numerical order. And here we would just say 4. Negative 4, 2, 4. A few unions in between those. We'll get a lot of practice working on this, and we will get it real, real common and sorted out. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. There can be questions about the video you saw here or anything else in math I'm happy to help with. Subscribe if you'd like to watch more videos um, or see other updates as they come. I'm going to try to run through all of Algebra 2 Trig and then eventually hit more classes like Algebra 1 and Geometry and Pre-Calc and everything else. If you have questions about stuff covered that's not in this video, still let me know. I'm happy to help. And finally, if you're not one of my students taking the class, but you found the video and are watching it, or maybe you're a teacher and are watching it, you can buy the curriculum and buy the worksheets to go through it. Uh, that's found at the website listed down below also. So again, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.